Hi, welcome to Logic Labs. We are going to be putting together your power connection. This is your plugs into a 9 volt battery and this here uh, connects to your breadboard. You're going to plug this into your breadboard. There's a little bit of hot glue here. This here is a header set that is four pins wide as you can see from here. So we have four pins and you're going to be pulling these two pins out and this one here. You're each going to be given a, a four pin header set. You'll pull the two pins out using some needle nose pliers or the tip of your wire strippers. Uh, you'll be soldering on the ends. So the tools that you'll be using, you should be should be purchasing a set of wire strippers. Doesn't matter the brand, it has to go be able to do 22 gauge, 22 and 24 gauge, red and black wires and some of the others are going to be 22 gauge and then the cat 5 and the other telephone wires are going to be 24 gauge so you'll need to be able to get a pair of wire strippers this here is is uh, my electrician's pliers or wire strippers and let me see if i can get the, the focus here let me zoom in here like this all right so ah, there we go so this here is 10, 12, 14, 18, uh, 16, 18, and 20. The 20 is too big. You will not be able to strip wires. If you get a pair of wire strippers, Klein is a very good pair of tools. They do make some smaller size tools or smaller diameter tools. Uh, but this is just an older pair I just wanted to show you. The 20 is too big. If you try and strip something that is a 20, let me show you here. So this here is a piece of regular wire. I'm going to cut the end off. You're going to be learning how to do this quite often. You'll notice I straightened it out. If you straighten it out, it makes life a little bit easier. And I'm going to put this in here. And this kind of strips. You see how it's not really doing a good job. Let me show you what a good job looks like. Now you'll notice when I put it in, I put it in straight and I am pulling perpendicular. So, IEEE will be selling a pair of wire strippers similar to these. Uh, I'm putting this in at the 22. See, it says solid. This is a piece of solid wire. So, put it in and it gives a nice strip. Now, this here is way too long. You need to cut. Remember, all your wires that go into your breadboard need to be 3 eighths of an inch. This is not quite 3 eighths of an inch. That's 3 eighths of an inch. You're going to learn how to figure this out because it's really important. Two shorter wires won't, won't give you a good connection. You'll have intermittent connections. And you see your little pieces of wire here. Make sure you clean up your workbench. If you don't clean up your workbench, you and I will have words. And that means you want to volunteer and do some tidying. I have lots of rooms that need tidying. And I'm more than happy to have people volunteer to help me tidy. So you are always welcome to volunteer to help me tidy up. But... And you can do that by not cleaning up your workspace. All right. Uh, so, I'm going to talk about stripping wires. Your wires will probably be stripped on these on these leads here. If they're not, you'll need to strip them. This here is a 24. So, just to demonstrate right here. See how that fits in the 24 right there? 24, 26. So, um, So the tools that you'll need to get, you'll need to get a pair of wire strippers that will go, that will do 22, 24, and 26 gauge. Uh, here's a, here's an old pair of electrician's wire strippers that I use. The brand is Klein. They make a very nice tool. I know Home Depot sells these. Do not buy the tools from Har the wire strippers from Harbor Freight. If you buy them from Harbor Freight, they will be the wrong size and your life will be unhappy. So this here is uh, AWG stands for American Wire Gauge. This is 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 because you can't quite read it here. Uh, so you'll notice that the 10 is a very large diameter hole. Here we go. Uh -oh. See the holes there? Uh, uh, nice large hole, and that won't work well. So other other brands to get. Ideal makes a very nice pair of pliers. These are about twelve, twelve or fifteen dollars, depending on where you buy them. Uh, these nice pair of wire strippers. Here's a here is one of the first pair of wire strippers that I purchased. Um, 
I use these, I use these for a really long time. Uh, and these here, this here is marked 22 to 30. So this is 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. Uh, again, 22, 24, and 26 is, would be good. You don't have to get to 26. 24 will be fine. I don't think uh, you're going to be doing anything smaller. Um, but these here are a really good pair of, of electronic strippers. I loan these to a friend and see what he does for me. Uh, let's talk about loaning tools. I highly recommend you never loan your tools out to anybody. Um, I know that sounds uh, not friendly, but loaning your tools out, you always get them, get them come, get them returned in, in bad condition. You see this right here, this this right here. I loan these to somebody. These here are soft steel. They cut copper, which is what your wires are. Uh, he went to cut a piece of, of uh, stainless steel cord. Um, and so we have this notch, and I had to file it down and clean it up so that way it doesn't bind anymore. But you see that hole right there? So don't loan your tools. Do not loan your tools out. You always get them back in an unclean condition and more than likely damaged. So I highly recommend you don't loan your tools out. Another pair, another pair of tools to get is a nice pair of needle nose pliers. I purchased these. Oh gosh, when I was about twelve. Uh, nice pair of tools. They will last you forever. You buy a good pair, good tools. Um, yes, good tools are expensive, but you don't need to buy new ones. Uh, and here are the pair of wire cutters. These here are called little shears, little wire cutters. They cut very nicely. Nice little notches on these. You see these stripes right here? So you'll break them. You'll break these at four when we're handing these out in class. So it'd be your job to break these off and pass it along. And I'm going to take a pair of I can use, I'm going to use these because they have a nice little serrated edge on the front here. So I'm going to use my serrated edge on the front here and I'm going to grab one of the pens and pull. Throw these out. Have these nice little pens and now this looks like a, a six year old with buck teeth and that's perfect. Then what we're going to do is take and put these in this vise right here. This here is this here wonderful little tool is called a helping hands. So let's talk about solder. Solder. This is solder. This is composed of lead and tin. So this this here is forty percent lead and sixty percent tin. Um, this is a, a box that I've had for a very long time. So as soon as you're done, you wash your hands. And the Romans used lead for all sorts of really great things, they, not knowing that it was poisonous. So their whole society wound up getting poisoned by lead. And uh, the richer you were, the more lead you had in your pots and your pans and your utensils. And your house was plumbed with, with uh, lead. And since they had volcanic water flowing through uh, with hot water, and uh, so they hot hot and cold running water throughout their throughout their houses. Problem with uh, the heat was it pulled more lead and put it into the water, so we saturated the the water with lead. And so lead lead poisoning does three things to you. One is it makes you stupid. The next is it makes you psychotic, and the last one is it makes you sterile. So all the more reason for you to go wash your hands and just clean up and just soap bubbles cleans your hands when uh, when you do the solder you will have the smoke just blow it away from you just blow it away not a problem so this is what happens when you put too much solder on here that lands on your leg it's gonna hurt you're gonna say ow speaking of ow do not touch from the black part all the way to the tip it is very very hot it is 520 degrees kind of hot our soldering irons in the labs are set at 525 so <clears throat> please be careful in that aspect so let's get down to business what you're going to do is you set this up already and then we're going to take these right here and i'm going to take a pair of pliers 
actually. Let me start over here. So let's assume that uh, your wires are broken off or, or the set you don't have wires. So I'm going to take these handy dandy wire strippers, cut them off. When you're stripping wires, remember to keep it perpendicular. This here is A28, so let's see, is that, is that good? Yes. Now, um, one of the tricks is, you see, see this is spread apart, so you have to rotate this and twist this like this. Okay, I'm just going to grab these and twist these, and now that holds these together. Now I'm going to use my needle nose pliers. You can use your fingers to do this, but I have big fingers. So we're going to take this and we're going to fold this over, make a hook. See the hook right there? Demonstrate again. Twist this better. Pull some solder off. You don't need very much solder here. The solder breaks off easy. I don't know if you saw, saw that I did that, but uh, one of the things to do with solder is wrap it up like this. Now you'll see this is really old solder and, and that black stripe there, that is lead. So the other thing is do not eat this, do not taste it, do not put this in your mouth. Wash your hands when you're done. Okay, so you're going to mount this like this. You're going to take your wire, first wire is going to get hooked over here, so I curled the wire, you remember I curled the wire, put a little end on that, and I'm going to put that in the hole here, now you pick up your solder, for soldering, the trick is to count to eight. First off, you put a, you clean the tip, then you put a little ball of solder. The heat has to come out of the soldering iron and go into the board and the part. This here is, uh, so part one, part two, you have to heat it up. So you're going to apply the heat with that little ball of solder. You see how it moves around? One, two, three, solder on, solder off, six, seven, eight. You're done. If you exceed eight, your parts start to melt, and that is bad. Now, I'm going to put my iron down. Always put the iron down. Because it is hot and you will burn yourself and you will say, ow. Let's not say ow this time. So, I'm going to hook this around here. Put this in the clip. Oh, let me do that again. So, hook that around there. Put a little bit of tension on it. So, here we go. Little ball of solder. Heat on. One, two, three. Solder on, solder off, six, seven, eight, and you're done. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is we're going to have hot glue in the, in the lab. I think all of you by now have experienced hot glue. If you haven't, um, I'll do another video on that. Now, you notice I left the heat on a little too long and see how this is not straight. That is because I left the heat on a little too long. You can straighten this out. Not a problem. Just bend it. Right. There will be extras of these in labs, so do not worry about that. You'll have extra of these. You put some hot glue on, and then this here will go into your breadboard. Your breadboard here. So you're going to be learning about these soon. This here is your breadboard. Do not panic. So by the time you get done watching all the videos, you'll be an expert on how to use this as well as how to actually make everything work nicely. So I did this pretty good. Here we go. This will plug into this hole right here. Like that. And that is what you're going to be doing. So voila and congratulations. You are now an expert. Thank you for watching.